The quadratics that we're going to solve in this lesson, we're going to kind of do it um, like chapter one style, where we drop a line down the equal sign and get everything away from the variable. So hopefully this should look very familiar to you. You can do this when you have this kind of um, quadratic, where there's no middle term, where the B doesn't exist. And you can do this because you only really have one variable to concentrate on. If you had a middle term, you would have an X in both the first term and the middle term. So it would be, make it significantly more complicated. So let's check out um, the next three examples, A, B, and C. Um, drop a line down the equal sign, add 27 to both sides. Again, this is just like in chapter 1. 3x squared equals 27, divide by 3, and so x squared equals 9. When you take the square root to cancel out the exponent, you have to make sure that you remember that not only is the square root of 9 3, but it's also negative 3. So there are two answers to this question, 3 and negative 3. Example B, drop a line, add 10, x squared equals 0, and now when I go to square root, I only have one answer because 0 only has one square root. There's no such thing as negative 0. And letter C, drop a line minus 11 divide by negative 5 x squared equals negative 1 and when you go to take the square root if you type this in your calculator you should get an error because you cannot take the square root of negative 1 until you um, learn about imaginary numbers. I know I keep teasing you about imaginary numbers, but in algebra we only concentrate on the real numbers. So for this one, um, we would say no real solutions because there's no number that we know that when you square it, you get negative 1. If you were um, paying attention and if you want to go back up and look, A, B, and C, when we had this situation right here, x squared equals some number, when the number was positive, we had two real solutions. When the number was, z like in letter A, when the number was 0, we had one real solution, like in letter B, and when the number was negative, like in letter C, we had no real solutions. Let's do one where there's a little more to it, but um, it's the same kind of technique. So what I have is I have a quantity squared equals a number. So even though it doesn't look like this, it is the same thing. It's something being squared equals a number. So I'll take the square root of both sides. I just wrote over my own question. So I'll take the square root of both sides and I get x minus 1 equals positive or negative 5. So when I drop a line to add 1 to both sides, there are going to be two answers. Because, well, I mean, we just learned right over here, when the value is positive, you have two answers. So the two possible answers are, well, if it's 5 plus 1, then one of the answers is 6. But what if it was negative 5 plus 1? then the answer is negative 4. So our values for x are 6 or negative 4. And one thing you could always do is go back into the original equation and plug in 6 and see if you get a true statement, and plug in negative 4 and see if you get a true statement, just like we did back in Chapter 1. A touch tank has a height of 3 feet. Its length is 3 times its width. The volume of the tank is 270 cubic feet. So let me underline the important information as a height of 3 feet. That's actually shown in the picture. Its length is 3 times its width, and the volume is 270 cubic feet. So 
Whenever you have a question and you're not really sure what to do, you play this game called What Do I Know? And What Do I Know is when you take the information that you have and say, well, I might not really know what to do, but what can I do with the information that I have in the moment? So they mention this word volume. And even if you're not really sure what to do, you say, well, it's a rectangular prism and I know how to find the volume of that. It's length times width times height. So I'll just write down the formula V equals length with height. You might not be sure what you're going to do with it, but at least you know that volume formula is somehow going to be involved in the question. And then you continue the game. You say, well, what do I know now? Well, I know that the volume is 270. So instead of V, I'll put 270. I know that the height is 3, so I'll put 3 in for H. And I know that the length is 3 times the width. So the length right here compared to the width right here is 3 times. So if this is x, then this is 3x. So now if I know the length and the width, I can go and plug it into my formula. So I've got 3x and x. So what I have is 270 equals 3x times x times 3. Oh, okay, now I can simplify, right? I'm not really sure what to do, but I know at this point I can simplify. So 270 equals, and this is 9x squared. So next thing to do is, well, let me drop a line because I can and I know how to do that. Divide both sides by 9. And I'm going to go over here. I get 30 equals x squared. Well, let's square root both sides. And you get x equals the square root of 30. So the length is 3 times the width. So if the width is represented by x, now we know what that length is. So the width is square root of 30. Now you're saying, Miss Lean, how come you don't turn that into a decimal? And I'm saying to you, hey, why should I deal with a rounded value? If you want to, you can. It's like, uh, I don't know, five point something. But I'm going to keep it as a square root of 30 because that's an exact value, just like a fraction compared to a decimal. Fractions are exact values, decimals are not. So square root of 30 is a perfectly acceptable answer. I know it looks bizarre, but you will write your answers like that in high school. So let's get used to it. And then the length is 3 times the width, so that would be 3 radical 30. And again, I'm going to choose not to turn that into a decimal, even though you probably have this uncontrollable desire to do so. It would be like, I don't know, 15 or 16 point something, but I'm not going to round. One thing that I want to show you right now before we wrap this lesson up is a big, big mistake that a lot of students make. So let's say I had something like this. Let's say it said 36 equals, let's say, 4x squared. So what I would encourage you to do is divide by 4, and then you get x squared equals 9, and then you would square root and you'd get x equals positive or negative 3. So we're going to write our values like this from now on. This means positive or negative. You don't have to write the number twice as if you put this super cool, sophisticated, advanced symbol. Okay, great. So you're probably thinking, what's this all about, Miss Lean? So here's it again. And here is the big mistake that a lot of students make. Is that they think that they can square root here. So they'll go, oh, I'll just square root both sides, and that will give me 2x, and that will give me 6, and that is wrong. Do not do that. Because you have to follow order of operations. You have to follow PEMDAS. And in this case, I'm going to introduce you to this new thing called PERMDAS. And PERMDAS is the order of operations, and you go, what's the R? And the R stands for radicals. So when you're going 
through order of operations, right? First you do parentheses, then you do exponents, and now we're going to throw in some radicals because exponents and radicals are inverses of each other. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Great. When we were talking about chapter 1, I said you're going to do PEMDAS backwards. So if you think about that, you can't do the radical until you've gotten rid of the multiplication. If you're going backwards, first you get rid of subtraction addition, then you get rid of division multiplication, then you get rid of radicals and exponents, and then parentheses when you're going backwards. So in this example, the student first got rid of the exponent before they got rid of multiplication. You can't do that. You have to get rid of multiplication and then exponents. Follow your PERMDAS order. And if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, I'll show you another example in class. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.